Featuring characters from other games, comics, or even movies and TV shows has become an increasingly common sight among fighting games within the last decade, even though it started as far back as the early 90s. Many might also remember games like Marvel vs. Capcom or Street Fighter X Tekken, but there is an important distinction between games like this and featuring guest characters. Crossovers are built from the ground up with the inclusion of clashing franchises or styles in mind. But when designing a guest character, there's a burden of trying to make them fit with the rest of the game. Naturally, there are all sorts of different ways to approach this. And as a general concept, there are plenty of both potential benefits and drawbacks. In today's video, we're going to be going over how guest characters are usually treated and if Tekken specifically even needs them at all. Let's get started. For starters, let's go back to where it all began. Those of you who have been around for a while are probably already shouting Fatal Fury. Indeed, SNK were among the first to invite guest characters into their games, but probably not in a way that most of you expect. After putting Ryo as an almost secret character in Fatal Fury Special, they later created a full-on guest-focused fighting game in the form of King of Fighters. At this point, most of its characters are associated strictly with KOF, yet many of them actually come from other SNK titles, like Ikari Warriors, Psycho Soldier, and their pachinko machines like Dragon Gall or Sky Love. This was shortly followed by Tekken 3 adding Gon, the titular character from a relatively obscure manga about a friendly little dinosaur exploring the world. By today's standards, it was not the most faithful adaptation, but he still went against the grain in almost every way, from his size to his attacks. Not long after, another series would be established with guest characters at its core, Super Smash Bros. What makes it unique from purely crossover titles is that even early on, Sakurai and his team put a lot of effort into making sure that each character represents their series, instead of trying to make them all fit into a unified system. That's why today, it's a crazy game that combines Kazuya's 10-hit combos, Cloud's Limit Break, Bayonetta's Witch Time, Minecraft's Crafting, and dozens of other unique mechanics. It's honestly insane to think that a seemingly casual party game has such an abundance of complex mechanics woven into it, all to make sure that the guest characters actually represent the games they come from. But let's move closer to the traditional realms of fighting games, and Namco in particular. For them, the first foray into designing guests started with Soul Calibur 2, and right off the bat, it was quite a crazy mix of Heiachi, Link, and Spawn. While Link was right at home in a largely medieval setting focused on melee weapons, an old martial artist and a Hellspawn wearing a symbiotic suit that feeds on his body are some more off-the-wall choices. To make sure they're not just some weird guys in Soul Calibur, but are actual guests from other franchises, each character had something that was special to them. Spawn flew around and shot necroplasm fireballs. Link had his spinning charge attacks, bow, boomerang, bombs, and even his classic dash attack. Heihachi actually ends up looking normal next to these two, but his fighting style was novel in and of itself in a game like Soul Calibur. Fast forward quite a few years, and now Bandai Namco thought it was appropriate to invite guests to Tekken. Out of hundreds of possible choices that would be safe and relatively easy to implement, they decided to go all out instead, giving us an outrageous selection of fighters with Akuma, Geese, Noctis, and Negan of all things. The latter two are a bit unusual for using weapons, and Noctis obviously has some extra magic to it on top, but the 2D guests are the truly unorthodox ones. Not only did they bring over their unique meter mechanics and EX moves, but also the special cancels, reversals, and unusually strong jump attacks. And with that, it's probably a good time to talk about the issues that crop up when developers decide to bring someone over. One of the biggest and most obvious issues that pops up when you're creating a guest character is that they demand special attention. If they don't have something unique that ties them to their origins, then your guest might as well just be an alternative skin for someone else. This creates so many extra challenges for the designers, because now they have to add something that would go beyond the standard systems, mechanics, and their design conventions. That in itself requires a fair bit of creativity, but it also has repercussions for the rest of the game, since you now have to balance those unusual elements against the rest of the game. Akuma is a great example of this. Invincible reversal, focus attack, EX moves, fireballs, 2D jump, special cancels. There are so many things about him that just wouldn't normally fit into Tekken, and it led to a massive issue when people discovered that he can turn these unique mechanics into an advantage that basically nobody else has. Naturally, this issue spills over onto the players. In an already complex game like Tekken, you could spend thousands of hours without running out of new things to learn. 
adding character specific elements that don't adhere to the universal system makes this process even harder. And these characters might force you to play in a way that isn't normal to tech it. But outside of balancing and gameplay design, there are some other problems as well. For example, what about the art style? Tekken is already so diverse that it's easier to avoid this issue. When you have cyber ninjas, robots, vampires, and animals, it's easier to make sense of some scrawny teen spawning weapons out of thin air or an angry red man floating towards you menacingly. Yet, how would someone like Kratos or Alien fit into a game like Tekken? Dead or Alive had a Halo Spartan as a guest at one point, and that didn't exactly blend too well, despite DOA also having crazy and over-the-top elements. Not to mention, stretching the limit of what makes sense could still detract from the overall aesthetic of Tekken by making it increasingly less coherent. Finally, there's another piece of criticism when it comes to guest characters, and that's the problem of wasted slots. This pain is felt especially hard in Tekken. We're on our eighth mainline game at this point, so there are so many favorites that we expect to see. Not everyone has strong feelings about this, of course, but every time a guest or underwhelming newcomer makes it in instead of like Armor King or Eddie, it will inevitably leave a sour aftertaste. We've mentioned the downsides, and they can seem pretty overwhelming, but there are still good reasons to have guest characters, and this one is simple, but powerful. Our primate brains just get fired up at the idea of crossovers and fights between things that don't otherwise connect. To this day, people won't stop having crazy discussions like who'd win in a Goku vs Superman fight, or arguing about whether Bruce Lee would be able to take down Mike Tyson. The entertainment industry is well aware of this, which is why we had a movie like King Kong vs Godzilla all the way back in 1962. And if anything, the trend has only gotten more popular. Instead of the old solo superhero movies, we get the whole pack in Avengers or Guardians of the Galaxy. When it comes to video games, you've all seen 2B running around in PUBG, or Kratos doing a K-pop dance after getting the epic Victory Royale by shooting Naruto in the final circle, or something equally outrageous. Even in fighting games, the power of smushing different IPs together is immediately obvious. It's always an inevitable boost of recognition and popularity among anyone who cares about said IPs, and ideally, those people might convert into dedicated players. But what about existing fans? Do they have a reason to care? I'd argue that yes, they do. While new mechanics and systems might make the experience less consistent and learning more challenging, they also add a healthy dose of variety into the game. And you know what? If we're gonna be playing these games for hundreds of hours, I'm more than okay with having to adapt to a unique character from time to time. Some degree of experimenting with the systems and going outside of their comfort zone is arguably healthy for the devs, and it's a great incentive to avoid stagnation. With all of that said, does Tekken 8 need guest characters? Objectively speaking, no. We've had amazing Tekken games well before Tekken 7 came in with a set of varied guests, and I could easily see them continue to succeed with Tekken-only characters, much like how Street Fighter was never in a rush to invite guests outside of their own beat-em-ups. But if we change the question to should Tekken 8 have guests, my opinion is yes, it should. And if I had to guess, almost everyone watching this video probably has a dream guest of their own. Be it Tifa from Final Fantasy, Kiryu from Yakuza, or even Baki from Baki the Grappler. Regardless of who you choose, what matters is that you have a character who would probably be sick as hell in a fighting game. Someone who might be really fun to use, and that's what matters the most. As long as the implementation is good, I will always welcome additions that could make the game more entertaining, while also inviting more people to enjoy my favorite fighting game series. Thank you for watching till the end, it means more than you may think. And as always, if you like this video, drop a like. If you dislike it, drop a dislike and let us know in the comments who your ideal guest characters would be. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.